Hi, it's October 8th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It's The Wire. Let's make this interactive. I've already made a video on this Bevel Baturbia fight recently, made one yesterday, where we talked about odds. And you, the public, have left a lot of comments on that video. Okay, great. I bought the first round. You guys bought the second round. I'll buy the third round at the risk of us getting a bit too intoxicated on this fight. Let me address some of the arguments raised in the comment section to yesterday's video. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just make a point here. Groves Dick, who many of you mentioned, right? Who I mentioned in the video. An important guy who is outboxing Baturbiev through the first two-thirds of that fight. Look at the scorecards, right? This is the guy, of course, who ended Adonis Stevenson's reign, right? Stevenson, by the way, needed surgery after that fight. We may recall it here. Very brutal fight involving Grosdick. Grosdick's also the man who just went the distance with David Benavides, who he sparred with in the past, right, at 175 pounds. Now, Grosdick, who openly says that Adonis Stevenson, not Arthur Baturbiev, but Adonis Stevenson, is the hardest puncher he's faced, right? Grosdick believes that Baturbiev beats Bevel. I have the interview in my favorites folder. It's one of the better interviews you're going to come across uh, from a boxer talking about styles and what have you, right? His belief is that Baturbiev's power is too consistent and too frequent and that a boxer like a Bevel eventually is going to wilt. Folks, I get the argument. So many of you in the comment section have made the argument that Arthur Baturbiev is simply too strong for Dmitry Bevel. Right now, if in fact that's the case, what I want is for somebody in this comment section to talk about why Baturbiev, who's supposed to be so strong, is the underdog in this fight. Folks, the line has had some volatility, but as I make this video on Bovada.lv, Baturbiev is still a plus 105 underdog. If he's just simply too Mike Tyson-esque, if he's just too strong and there's nothing to keep him out of the pocket, why is he an underdog? Let, let me make another point here, and I think Bevel wins the fight. But just understand, what I've proposed is actually a hedged position, right? I'm completely fine. I mean, completely fine with Baturbiev winning if it's in the first six rounds of the fight at a plus 750. Look at the odds right now on OddsChecker.com at some of these casinos, right? Plus 750 at others, plus 500. If Baturbiev wins in the first six rounds, I'm also fine if he wins in the seventh round, you're getting a plus 1,800 there. And if he wins in the eighth round, you're getting a plus 2,000 there. Right, folks, we're proposing a hedge. My basic thesis is, and again, I think Bevel wins the fight. But if Baturbiev brings a dynamic that Bevel has not seen before, if it's just too impossible to keep Baturbiev out of the pocket, I believe this fight should end in the first eight rounds. Folks, you're paid handsomely if that happens. Let me also say too, at bovada.lv, and let's be adults, you need to check the legality of these sites in your jurisdiction. Right at bovada.lv right now, they have a sliding scale over under. Now you need to be careful in dealing with any sliding scale over under where they give you over unders all the way through the midway point of the 12th round. 
right? Because they're built on algorithms. So believe it or not, you can get in under eight and a half rounds. This is an alternative bet, right? You can get in under eight and a half rounds. If you're that certain that Peterbiev is just going to be too strong, it's going to steamroll Dmitry Bivol. You can get up through the midway point of the ninth round, right? Eight and a half at a plus 230 right now. And you have an easy hatch of Bevel simply to win at a minus 135. That's at bovada.lv right now. No, I don't have stock in that website. Just understand, if, in fact, Beevil, who did get a stoppage in his last fight against Zinnad, also did drop Lyndon Arthur, who went the distance the first time, with Anthony Yard. He did drop Arthur late in that fight. Arthur got up, went the distance. But the point is, Beevil has more power than you think. If, in fact, given that this fight also has an injury, Right, you have Baturbiev coming off meniscus surgery. Right, given the possibility that <coughs> Baturbiev finds out that he can't move, finds out that it's too soon after surgery to fight Dmitry Bevel, given the possibility that Baturbiev actually loses his title on his stool before the midway point of the ninth round, understand, this Bovada LV bet that I'm talking about, the under 8.5 at a plus 230 hedged with Bevel simply to win at a minus 135, would give you a minus 135 if Bevel wins. You would win both sides of the play. If Bevel gets the stoppage inside of the midway point of the ninth round. You also, of course, collect the plus 230. You don't have to be a mathematical genius to figure out how to profit from a plus 230 when the other half of the play is a minus 135, right? If Paterbiev gets the stoppage before the midway point of the ninth round, right? But what I want here and let me challenge those with this thesis that the underdog here was just simply too strong for an unbeaten Beevil. What I want folks to do here, given that Beevil has actually fought Joe Smith, both of these guys fought Joe Smith, right? Given that Beevil's also fought Canelo, given that Beevil has also fought John Pascal, in other words, folks, he's fought punchers. In the comment section of this video, tell us the fight in which Dimitri Bevel is bothered by an opponent's power. Give us the fight where an opponent is just too strong for Bevel, who had to resort to holding, clinching, running, simply to survive in the fight. Does that footage exist? Because I can tell you that if you look at the second third of the Groves Dick, Arthur Baturbia fight, you're going to see a fighter giving Baturbia problems with movement and timing. Right? I can tell you the theses for a Bevel victory. There's film for that. What's the film that provides the theses for a Baturbiev victory? Where Baturbiev is simply too strong for Bevel. In what fight have has <laughs> in what fight have we seen that? Right, understand, not even Canelo. And Canelo's a guy who, let's be clear here, although some of his fights have gone the distance of late, he drops Jamel Charlo. 
right? Jamel Charlo is moving away from Canelo after getting dropped. He drops Jaime Munguia. He drops Edgar Berlanga. Right? Understand, Canelo is a guy who drops people. Right? He also can stop you. You might recall what happened to James Kirkland, Caleb Plant, Billy Joe Saunders, Rocky Fielding. Folks, he, guy with punch, guy with better defense than Baturbiev, much better defense. Right? Let's remember, Baturbiev had to get off the canvas against Callum Johnson. Right? Understand, Bevel has been in the ring with established knockout punchers. Goes the distance with Canelo. Wins the fight. Wins, in my opinion, most of the later rounds of the fight. In other words, the dynamic in that fight wasn't Bevel just trying to make it through the end of the 12th round. Bevel trying to hide and stuff like that. In my favorites folder, I have highlights from that fight. Folks, in some rounds, it's Bevel teeing off on Canelo. This brings me to my next point. The Baturbiev side of the ledger, and maybe you're right. I'm not saying you're not. Understand, <laughs> I'm proposing a hedge. If Baturbiev wins in the first two-thirds of this fight, I'm good. Right, but, but understand, the Baturbiev side of the ledger, and they're the ones picking the underdog here. Right, they want you to believe that Baturbiev is far and away the best fighter Bevel has ever fought. Right, now folks, let's get controversial here. I would argue that Canelo is a better fighter than Bevel. Right, you're talking about a great defensive fighter. Forget his power and all that other stuff. You're talking about a great defensive fighter. Where's the Canelo footage where he's getting knocked down by a Callum Johnson? Where's that footage? Right, I can show you the Bevel footage, excuse me, the Paterbia footage. What about Paterbia against Marcus Brown? Very important fight. Now, Marcus Brown had a little bit of Edgar Belanga in him. He gets bullied over by the ropes. Okay, fair enough. Right, but did you notice that Marcus Brown is holding his own? Who's the person bleeding in that fight? Isn't it Baturbiev? Right, isn't Baturbiev having problems keeping his head from clashing with Marcus Brown's head? Right, folks, where's the footage where that's happened to Dimitri Bevel? Well, just to understand, Bevel has fought Canelo, right? Who I would say, you know, anyone who's fought Canelo has fought someone that is at least on par with Baturbiev. Is that a fair statement? I know we're going to talk about Canelo at 175. Folks, he's only lost once at 175, and it wasn't to a reigning champion in Kovalev, right? The only champion he lost to at 175 is Bevel. But what I want people to do is I want folks to revisit the Gilberto Ramirez film, right? Folks, understand Ramirez, as I make this video, is the champion 25 pounds above 175, Right, this is a guy good enough to be the cruiserweight champion. When you look at the film, you're going to be astonished just looking at the sizes of the guy versus Bevel. Right, one wonders how Ramirez, who was a champ at 168, ever made 175. Right, he is physically much bigger. Physically much bigger. Then Bevel, that's a fight Bevel won. He's a better body puncher, and the body punching is an issue. Here, 
right? My earlier video, I didn't mean to say that Baturbiev has no ability to hit the body, right? My point was simply he's primarily a headhunter. That's who he is, right? Some of you have mentioned the Callum Smith fight. Look at the end of the Callum Smith fight, right? But understand, to the body, there's no comparison to me. Gilberto Ramirez is a better body puncher than Arthur Perturbiev. Right? Gilberto Ramirez, by the way, has one of boxing's, not the divisions, not the cruiserweight divisions. In my eyes, he has one of boxing's best long jabs. Right? Forget his body punching. He's a switch. Right? If he takes a step back, he could control you with a jab. Look at his fight against Joe Smith. Now, are you certain that Arthur Baturbiev is a better fighter than Canelo and Gilberto Ramirez? I'm not. Right, look, I love Baturbiev. I understand he has a 100% KO ratio. I'm a big fan of Groves Dick. It's very impressive that Baturbiev beat Groves Dick. Right? The point I'm making is simply, if you look at that Grove Stick fight, you're going to see what boxing can do to Arthur Baturbiev. Right? Marcus Brown, early in his fight against Baturbiev, and that fight doesn't go that long, has his moments against Baturbiev. We've seen Baturbiev get knocked down. Right? And so, to the crowd that believes that Baturbiev is from another planet. That Beevil, who's fought people like Canelo, has never seen anything remotely approaching the brilliance of Arthur Baturbiev. All I can say is, I think you're wrong. Let's just agree to disagree on this. As we sip on our sodas, right? Can't get the prop in the picture. Um, Bevel has actually fought world-class competition, right? I mentioned Jean Pascal earlier. I think Pascal's a very heavy puncher, right? I know many of you feel that Pascal isn't the puncher Baturbiev is. Just understand that Grovestick doesn't believe Baturbiev is the puncher who Adonis Stevenson was. Right, folks, Baturbiev is a heavy puncher. That's why, <laughs> that's why my hedge has an accommodation for him winning in the first eight rounds against an unbeaten Beevil. I know he's a heavy puncher. But he's not some unprecedented puncher. Are you certain that Canelo's left hook, the one that stops stops the Kovalev fight, right? Canelo follows it up with the right hand, but let's face it, one minute Kovalev's coherent, gets hit with the left hook. The next minute Kovalev's over by the ropes, you know, trying to hold himself up. Are you certain that Baturbiev throws anything as hard as Canelo's left hook? I'm not. Right? Finally, let me just say this too.